the XFL has done something that no other alternative leagues in the past have done in terms of a broadcast partnership. They have set themselves up to be on networks like Fox, ABC, ESPN, FS1. I mean, right off the bat, those names, when you hear that, it legitimizes the league tenfold. Yeah, I mean, let's think about this. The NBA, the NFL, NASCAR, what are they on? All those channels. So it's a huge feather in Oliver Luck's cap to be able to get this type of TV deal right off the bat as a startup league. So, and one of the things they did to ensure that was they're not, they did not secure any kind of funding for uh, broadcasting rights. So they're not getting, they're not getting any money from the, from these, uh, these companies to broadcast their games but here's the thing this is becoming kind of a trend f1 formula one very low viewership in the american market the united states market they went to espn in 2018 and said hey we're gonna start we're gonna allow you to broadcast use our broadcast for free uh, so we can grow our base in the united states after only one year of doing that, they've literally grown their viewership 19% year over year from 2018 to Damn. current 2019. Yeah, it's it's been wow. a huge boon for That's them. Impressive. And look, they have, and now they have a popular show, a popular documentary on Netflix because of it. So you're, they're seeing the fruits of, of not being able and, and not charging for broadcasting rights. And not only that, yeah. they're, it allows them to spend money in other places to enhance that broadcast. Well, I think they understand the impact that ESPN, ABC, and Fox has. Like, not only are they broadcasting your your show, they're promoting it. So when you see all of these shows on ESPNs, like First Take and everything, they're obviously going to promote it more because they're going to air it later that day. And that's like the kind of the yeah. the subtitle to all of this. Like, they have a vested a interest win. in covering it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. the biggest yeah. knock on the biggest knock on you know, people that are trying to rag on the TV deal is the rights fee aspect. And I get it. That's where you make your money. But if you're an alter, if you're a startup alternative football league, what other options do you have? I mean, you have to take the exposure route to get your product out there. Nobody's going to pay for a product that when you go to the table with them doesn't exist yet. You have nothing to show them except, you know, right. Hey, we have Oliver Luck. We have Bob Stoops. We have all of this funding in place so we're we're a legitimate league but other the than that you have factor. no leg to stand on so i mean when you approach abc when you approach fox you have to take the exposure route and in hopes that two years down the line your product has evolved enough to where you're going to go back to the table with a product that you can then say all right what are you going to pay to have the rights to air our games so yeah. I don't see how the XFL could have done much better, honestly. No, they hit a home run with this, and really on two ends. One, you know, one content is king, and free content is king, right? ABC and Fox, they love that, right? I mean, they're not dishing out money, right? And they're putting football on TV. Now it's not the NFL, but it could be the NFL. It could eventually morph into something like that. I think the think the other thing too, fellas. If you think about sports fans and where they watch games, right? Yeah, sure, some of them sit around at home and watch TV, maybe on a weeknight. But weekends, especially kind of the young millennial generation, Z, those guys are out of bars, right? They're sitting around with their buddies, drinking a beer, watching a game. And if they're on ESPN and Fox, they're always going to be on in a bar. And that's how you get exposure to your potential fan base. So that's what I really like about it is, is it's really allowing to, it's really exposing the league to the people you want to expose to in the areas where they're going to watch it. Well, Gless, you just hit it. You just hit it, man. Exposure. So let's talk about this. One, the TV deals. Two, the cost of admission, right? We're talking about $20 tickets to get into the stands. Let's talk about betting. They're trying to promote the, the gambling within this uh, XFL. They're just trying to reach fans at this point. They're trying to sell yeah. their brand, their type of game. And then, like Kenny said, in two years from now, I'm like, hey, this is the prop that we've laid out this last two years. What are you going to pay me now? Well, and, and the, the end goal is to get eyeballs on your product. Yep. Those channels, ES, ESPN, ESPN2, ABC, Fox Sports 1, you're going to get a lot of eyes on your product on those channels. It's not like you're on CBS All Access or Bleacher Report Live or some app that you know you have to download or doesn't work right or anything like that. The, 
you are going to be dealing with premium channels who do this for a living. And they're actually allowing them to go in and set up their broadcast. Like, so they're going to, they're going to have the professionally, they're going to have the professionals at each place setting up their broadcast. It's not going to be alpha entertainment or the XFL broadcasting their own stuff. Those guys are going to come in like they normally do and set everything up. So it's going to be professionally done from day one, which is right. fantastic. Yeah, yep. so that's a big thing that separates them from the AAF. One, the channels that they're on, like Glessner said, are going to be in sports bars. You're, you, they're not playing TNT. They're not, you know, right. not every sports right. bar gets CBS Sports. I don't get CBS Sports, but I get FS1. I get ESPN. It's on most basic cable packages. And then, of course, everybody gets, yeah, everybody gets right. ABC and Fox. Um, but, yeah, the whole production cost thing the AAF they were basically like a two-hour infomercial they had to yeah. pay production fees they weren't getting any rights or advertising dollars they basically were buying the space to promote their product where the XFL yeah they're not getting rights fees for airing their product on these on these networks but they're not paying a dime in terms of production costs so right there that's a win as well All right I, I just I just go back to I'm a huge motorsports fan. I, I like all forms of motorsports and I've always followed F one closely and I have never ever, very hardly ever have run into somebody like wearing F one gear in, in the United States, like anything like that. And I literally have run into three or four guys wearing Ferrari, Mercedes, Red Bull, like a ap racing apparel from Formula One within the past year. And, and it just shows the impact and the growth that being able to get on a major network like ESPN, what it's done for Formula One and what it can do, what it has potential to do for the XFL. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the two guys that negotiated this deal, you know, Oliver Luck, we spoke about him in another episode. I mean, that's all he's done is make awesome deals like this. And then you've got one of the best media uh, visionaries uh, maybe in the history of um, – sports and certainly in sports entertainment and Vince McMahon. Right. Yep. So I, really none of us should be shocked. I was shocked to see how great the deal was. I was like, Holy smokes. I mean, it's, it's no, the it exposure blew, yeah. that they're going to get is incredible. Yeah. I mean, you can't yeah. do much better than getting on Fox and ESPN and the personalities that come with it, which is something that also came out recently uh, with some reports of broadcasters that are going to be covering games in the stadiums and in the studio. And it's a, it's an impressive list. Like it's legit. Dynamite. It's legit people from ESPN. It's legit people from Fox. You're talking yeah, you've Steve got... Levy. You're talking Dan Orlovsky. Pat McAfee. Yep. Pat McAfee is perfect I for love the XFL. Pat McAfee. Yep. Steve hey, Levy's like day. the number two guy at ESPN. He does the alter. He does the second Monday Night Football game every year. Now that Chris Berman has has uh, basically retired. Um, so these these aren't just you know guys that you never heard of they are like cornerstones yeah. of espn and then on the fox side um you're getting joel clatt who's like the guy at fox i love joel clatt do you guys do you guys listen to him on any radio shows or, or listen to him in pregame he is awesome i, I think he's one of the on best twitter. color guys in the business yeah i follow him on twitter and he does a lot great. of interactive stuff on twitter he's pretty good um and plus you riley also kurt menifee's at, is doing the fox yep. broadcast yep. as That's right well. yep he, he, he might be the biggest guy out of the bunch. And, and I know Steve Levy and I know those guys at ESPN are very impressive, but Kurt Menefee's hosted the NFL Sunday countdown on Fox for what, six or seven years now. Like yeah. it's the most, it's the most viewed countdown I think in the United States for American football. So I, that's a huge gift for them. Um, by the way, a side note, I can't bring up Dan, We can't bring up Danny Orlowski and not at least laugh of when he ran out of the back of the end zone. For oh, the Lions. God. <laughs> he's he's scrambling out of the pocket and he just casually runs at the back of the end zone and continues to run like the play is still going. It I will say, I think it was by a yard. It was like six <laughs> yards out of bounds. Like, how did well, you, you didn't see that? I have no idea. You I will say, what? I think he's a much better broadcaster um, analyst than he is a quarterback. Oh, well, he was part of that whole. He was part of that whole UConn team. I think that he, he kind of brought UConn football out of the yeah. out of the dark ages. But you know what? I'd be running like out of bounds like that too if Jared Allen was chasing me. <laughs> right, <laughs> and it, it's important to it's important to bring up that the New York Post has reported this. Um, the XFL Correct. has not released any official statements, and obviously these aren't all of the names that you'll be seeing on Fox and ESPN. But if these names are actually true, mm -hmm. that's a hell of a start. Yep. 
we'll probably get some sideline reporters that we see on Saturdays and on Sundays too, right? Um, yep. it, you know, just people who have contracts with ESPN and Fox that that'll be there. They'll be interviewing the coaches and the players on the sideline. I mean, fellas, uh, Diana I Rossini you. is reported. Diana Rossini for ESPN is reported to be a, a sideline reporter. Wow. Yep. Um, I actually hey. didn't know that before today. She, she's on a lot of big ESPN stuff, but I don't oh, know about sure. you guys, but I'm excited because it's going to look like an NFL production, right? This isn't going to be some side, you know, some B-level production value. I mean, it's going to be quality football on really high quality production. And that's what I'm excited about is that that's how you get behind it. It's a good looking product. It's a win-win. It's, it's, it's live content, which Glessner talked about earlier. It's live content for these networks and it's exposure for the XFL. So it's a win-win for everybody. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll see where it goes from here in a couple of years. We'll see where that rights fee, um, where that conversation goes. If the XFL does, does grow in popularity, does grow in exposure, yep. Then, yep. then they're going to go back to the table. But other than that, I mean, they, they, hit, the, they hit the ball out of the park. What's up, football fans? This is Riley from XFL Chalk Talk. Thank you so much for watching. You can interact with the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at XFL Chalk Talk. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can keep up with the latest news from around the XFL.